Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jane, this is Loopy Mabel's Closet. Today's video is wanted to share with you what I've been doing, an update really, on my latest pattern drafting, the ruffle dress that I've been designing for myself. I've done a few tweaks, I think I've improved it greatly, and I thought I'd share it with you, so please stay tuned. and welcome back thanks for joining me today thank you to all my lovely subscribers and if you just found my channel and you like to follow along with all my sewing all my dressmaking shenanigans my pattern drafting my style and inspiration I would love it if you could hit the subscribe button then you can follow along with me too I love to read all your comments bear with me if I don't reply straight away because it takes quite a while to go through them and I like to reply to everybody so don't think I have ignored you if I haven't replied straight away. Yeah, so this week I've been pretty busy working on version two, final version two of the dress that I've just drafted for myself. If you just found me, and you might not be aware of that, but I've just fallen in love with pattern drafting. I am just totally engrossed in the whole process of it. It's really getting my creative juices out. I think. I think one of the reasons why I love the pattern drafting so much is that I can create what I want from inside my, like inside my creative side and I can bring it into reality. I'm not saying I'm perfect by no means, but I'm learning, I'm enjoying it and what I'm creating is wearable. So that's good. And also it's wearable and I am going to wear them. So that's win-win, isn't it? And that's what I want to do. And I just feel as if it's like really bringing out me, my style, I don't know what my style is to be fair, but uh, whatever I do, I make, I like, so that's my style. And um, so that's, I think that's why I'm enjoying it. And also I have learned so much. So if you are sitting there watching me today thinking I would love to have a go at pattern drafting, seriously, have a go. You just need to get your bodice blocks uh, created and there's loads of tutorials on YouTube to create your bodice blocks. And once you've got your bodice blocks, the world is your oyster. I have two books, well I've got quite a few books, but the two main books that I use that I refer to all the time, I'll list them in the box below, the Natalie Bray books and um, I just absolutely love those books. When I first got them, I've had them quite a while, when I first got them I just flicked through them and put them back on my bookshelf because they, are, they can seem a little bit technical or intimidating but they're not really if you just read through them take your time I've read through those books in the last six weeks literally hundreds of times and to start off with it was just like oh my head didn't understand what the what she was on about or what she meant by that technique or whatever but now I've read it and read it and read it read it and studied and practiced and unpicked few swear words I sort of saw it's all sort of seems to be coming together and I like I'm kind of understanding what it's all about but I'm nowhere near perfect nowhere near an expert but I'm enjoying it so if you fancy having a go I highly recommend you have a go and th these two books I'll list them they are really good books once you get a little bit more confident in yourself um so that was my first dress which I did using this gorgeous linen viscose blend in this gorgeous lilac-y, dusky rose pink and really love it. I wear it, I've worn it a few times and uh, but it wasn't quite right and I think the reason why it wasn't quite right was I wanted a fitted dress, I was, I, I, that's what I was looking for, a fitted type of structure, more structured dress and I think because this has got more of a drape to it, it wasn't right, wasn't really giving me that structure that I wanted. It's it's perfect for a looser fitting smock type dress, this fabric or a blouse, but not for what I wanted. But obviously I don't know until I learn. And uh, I had to cut into some fabric because otherwise if, you, if you're not gonna take the plunge and cut it into some fabric, then you're never gonna know, know are you really? And also I've learned the fact that it does make a difference, funnily enough, about the fabrics that you choose for that particular garment, which something else I have 
I knew, but it was always in the back, back of my, my head and I wasn't really taking into consideration that it is quite important. So now I know. So now I know that if I want something that's a little bit looser, flowing with drape, then pick the looser, flowing, drapey type of fabrics like linen viscose, all those type of blends or compositions in fabric. If I want something a little bit more structured, a little, a little bit more fitted, then obviously I'm going to go something that's maybe got a tighter uh, weave to it and something that's maybe a little bit crisper and holds itself better and has maybe obviously less drape. Listen to me, I sound like I know what I'm talking about. Uh, do, I so do I sound impressive? Uh, seriously, so that's what I learned from that. So in a way, it's a good thing. Also, on my first draft, the zip was, um, well, it was a nightmare. Me and zips don't get along. What I do now, I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Um, so I, it was a full length zip. I got originally thick, but I chopped the zip off thinking well, I only needed to go to the waist. And um, no, that wasn't a good idea. I can only just get it on over my, my bust. I have to like, wiggle it to get it on. And it won't even go on Mabel because Obviously, Mabel's solid. There's no wiggling on Mabel. So I knew when I tried it on Mabel originally, I thought, oh, what have, what have I done now? Luckily, it fits on me because I can wiggle it on and wiggle it off. But in time, that isn't very good either because in time, it's going to cause um, stress probably on the bottom of the zip. So I'll have to be careful with that. But I love it. I love the drape. I love the floor, but it wasn't what I wanted. Um, I love the neck, but again, I like the ruffle on the neck, but it was a little bit too drapey, too low. So that was version one. So I went back to the drawing board. Let's see if I can get that to... Yeah, so I went back to the drawing board and did a few tweaks. First tweak, I'll show you what I've done. So this is my drafted pattern. So the only difference I did on the this one was I was I reduced the original bodice block neckline by only half a centimetre. Whereas on this one I reduced it by two centimetres and I moved the shoulder dart into the armhole. This one had the shoulder dart on it, so I didn't use the shoulder dart, I moved it into the, the armhole. And what else did I do? That was th that was the back. That's the only difference I did on the back bodice, the sleeve. I didn't do anything different on the sleeve. There's the skirt piece. I'll put notches in, added the notches for where I want the zip to go, which is further down beyond the bodice line into the skirt area. So use full length zip and my pocket notches because I forgot to put pockets in that one. I mean, what was I thinking? Uh, so I put my pocket notches in the skirt and there is the actual pocket template. If you want a freebie downloadable pocket template, I've got one on my website. I'll put the link in the box below. Please feel free to download it. It's just a freebie. Sometimes if you haven't got a pocket template, then here's one you can use and you have it to hand all the time and it's a really good pocket size. And, um, and I made the sleeve ruffle a little bit longer than that one there. I didn't think it had enough length on the sleeve ruffle on that one. So I've doubled the sleeve ruffle on there. And for the collar, that was just originally like a hemmed ruffle. This is doubled, so it's doubled over fabric. And obviously that gives it a little bit more weight to it as well. And obviously I think it's a neater finish too. So I did that, or difference for the neck ruffle. And on the front bodice, all I did again was just the front reduced the I raised it up a bit more because I took two centimeters off so I raised it up by half a centimeter just to give it a little bit higher neckline which is what I wanted so that's the only tweaks I did and obviously the fabric makes a heck of a difference this is cotton poplin this is rose and hubble absolutely love it and again this is another cotton poplin I got both of these from my local haberdashery store and I think they worked really well. So I'll stand up and show you so you can see the drape on this one. Obviously, I'm going to pop some pictures up of me wearing this one in the garden. I haven't took, I haven't took any pictures of this one yet, but you can see it on Mabel. And um, I just love how they've turned out. So there we go. And it's got pockets. 
and you can see a bit better on the arm frills, a little bit deeper on the arm frills. And if I turn around, you can see the zip. The zip goes to somewhere about here, so it's easy to get on and off. And I just think it's much more structured and it's totally pretty and I love it. And there's enough room for me to get a long sleeve t-shirt underneath as well. Um, so it's just absolutely perfect. I'm so thrilled with it. And again, this one here and this one, the zip went in like an absolute dream. I've cracked inserting the zips at long last. Me and zips just didn't get along. I just couldn't get it in neat enough. I always seem to be fingers and thumbs and upside down and back to front and it just just wouldn't go in straight forward like it should. I know how to put a zip in. No problems putting zips in trousers and things like that, but just this zip, ah, I don't know, I couldn't get it right. So this one went in like a dream and when I got it in straight away, the first time around, my first thing I said out loud was, I can't wait to show everybody or tell everybody on here, I got my zip in straight away. So you'd be really pleased for me. I was well chuffed. And I'll just show you the back of this one and I think I've done pretty darn well getting that zip in there. And it goes all the way down to somewhere around about there. Just needs a little bit of a press, this one. This is fresh off the sewing machine. And again, I love this fabric. It's like a grey, khaki, greeny tone. I'm not quite sure what colour it is to be fair and it's got these gorgeous little sprigs, creams, caramel sprigs all over and it's just got that lovely vintage vintage feel to it too. And I think it'll go gorgeous with maybe a little um, grandad style vest over the top for a little bit extra layer with the sleeves still coming th coming out the outside on the vest. I think that would look really nice. So. I'm going to hunt through my knitting patterns and maybe make a nice caramel cream uh, grandad style knitted vest to go on that one. And again, loads of colours in this one so I could mix and match all sorts with this one. So I'm really, really pleased and this is the final version. So I've done quite well going from version one, few tweaks to something that I'm really pleased with. So this is version two and I'm going to name this dress the Primrose dress after my gorgeous little cat who's asleep in the corner there. So I'm going to call this the Primrose dress and I would love one day down the line to be able to convert them into some sewing patterns and share them with you lovely people out there because I know quite a few of you have already asked me, you know, on my Pinifor dress and my Peter Pan collar blouse that I did, would I be making them into patterns and I would absolutely love to do that. So I'm researching it, looking into it, the costings and what, how you go about it and things like that. As I say, I'm still in the early processes of all that. I'll, so I'll keep you posted on how I get on with all that. That could be something though I could work on definitely down the line as I get better. And um, yeah, just super thrilled. So I can't wait to get drafting on something else. I'll show you my original, just to remind you of my little sketchy drawing of what I had envisaged. And I think I've got it pretty spot on to be fair a little ruffle collar high neck fitted bodice type of look and gathered skirt and oh that's the back version with a zip really technical drawings there as you can see i'm not an artist and um but i think i've done quite well considering i've drew something on a piece of paper and i've created it into reality and it's going to go in my wardrobe and i'm absolutely chuffed to bits and um i can't wait to work on my next design it's going to be a wrap a wrap front type of dress not sure so that's what i'm going to be working on next and i'm going to make myself a few more of those peter pan collar blouses so i'm like totally loving it totally loving doing my own thing and um, i've even while i was making this one i even did a crib sheet of every stage, every step from cutting it out to putting it all together. So if I ever do fortunately get to make it into um, a sewing pattern for you lovely people, I've got it all ready and I could get it all sorted into a little instruction booklet. So I've got every little step done. I've even took photographs of how it will be laid out on your fabric. So you could, you know, I've done all that. 
and I have, what else did I do? I've timed myself just to see how long it would take roughly and I've worked on obviously 115 centimetres wide fabric for these two uh, so I could get the pattern layout. So I've been doing all little bits of things like that. I'm uh, thoroughly enjoying it all. I've, I think I've definitely missed my vocation. Wish I'd done all this when I was when I left school. I absolutely loved dressmaking at school. Uh, that was my one of my favourite lessons. Once a week, we, well, once a week or twice a week in home economics, as it was called back then. The boys went off and did woodworking and metalworking, and the girls had to go and do home cooking or sewing or and sewing. So the home cooking was okay. I, I did it because we had to. But the sewing class, couldn't wait for the next sewing class. I absolutely loved every part of it. And um, I remember my final exam we had to make. My teacher wasn't, wasn't very nice. She was horrible to me, my teacher. She never gave me any encouragement at all. Um, not at all. Um, she used to always pick faults in everything that, that I made. And no, she wasn't very nice. And But even so, I carried on because it was what I liked to do. And then I think that's probably what that was probably what I should have gone down the avenue of when I left school but I didn't and I remember in the exam we had to do a practical exam and we had to make like one side of the blouse we had to do the cut we had to do the the yoke um the collar a pl placket and the sleeve and we had to do like work on more of one side of the blouse to do all of those techniques and I think you had to do the right side of the blouse I think it was and because the fabric I'd used was the same on both sides I'd accidentally flipped all my pieces over and I ended up making the left hand side of the blouse. It was absolutely beautifully made and just two minutes before the end of the exam my horrible teacher came over and said to me you're doing the wrong side you should have been doing the right side and so that's like oh great. Um, and instead of her saying, don't worry, it's beautiful, don't worry, no, she didn't. Anyway, but I got still got a B. I got a B for that. So if I'd done the right, the right side in the exam, I probably would have got an A star. I don't think I had A stars in them days. but So clearly back then when I was 15, 16, I, that was something that I really liked to do and really I think I was pretty good at doing. And uh, I wish hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it, that I maybe went down that route a little bit more. So here I am at 55 and I'm now back into my dressmaking. Did it for quite a few years when the children were little, made them up. I was off with some gorgeous pinafores and the boys some gorgeous dungarees and matchy matchy sets and all that, but then full-time job and, you know, busy lives. And um, so now I'm back to my dressmaking again. I've just found my vocation, definitely. And I'm absolutely loving it. And I, luckily for me, I've got my own sewing room that's just just my little haven and I'm really really fortunate not everybody has that luxury and I come in here when my lovely husband John is having his little sleeps because he does have quite a few sleeps through the day and so I just come in here when he's having his nap and I do my sewing or my creating and at the minute it's the pattern drafting so if you sitting there watching me and you think well ah, there's no way I could do that yes seriously you could. You just got to do a little bit of preparation. Just maybe do a little bit of study and a little bit of research. Get your get your block. You need to get your blocks. Obviously, so work on one block. Maybe the fitted bodice block. Work on that. Get the sleeve and have a go at making some twirls. Just even if you just do a completely plain off the bodice block. Just cut out, sew it up. Just do, stitch the darts. Just do the bodice. Don't do any adjustments to it. Just make it. With attach the sleeves. Have a go at that a few times and then start exploring and adding a little bit of tweaks, uh, adding a little bit of what you like, adding a little bit of what you are, bring it all out there onto the paper and get creating. I'm not saying I won't be doing other patterns companies because I've got loads of patterns to do and that's what I'll also do. But this side is just like, oh, I found I found something that's really inspiring me at the minute. So if I can inspire you to have a go, uh, that would be amazing. So and if you do, please let me know in the comments box below what you've done or what you're going to go, what you're going to go and try. Have you 
done some pattern drafting what have you made is there any pitfalls is there any tips and advice you can share with me because all advice is greatly appreciated uh, I still learn and still get the stitch ripper out no matter what I do because that's what stitch rippers are for aren't they so um, that's never going to change and that I mentioned it before in one of my previous vlogs the stitch width on your sewing machine that is just a game changer for me now if you don't know what I'm on about I just came across it by accident I don't know what what I was what I was researching but on my sewing machine I've got the brother sewing machine it I like to do the one centimetre seam allowance, you know, on the stitching plate, they have the little markings, but the, they don't have, it's not very clear. And I was forever struggling, thinking, well, where's my one centimetre seam allowance and all this. And I came across something where is, if you, to keep your foot, your normal footer, your normal foot on the edge of your fabric, use your stitch widths to get your seam allowances. Now on my machine, my stitch width is two. So if I set my machine to two, that is one centimetre seam allowance with my foot against the edge of the fabric. So I've got a memory on my machine. So on my machine, I just set the memory and when I want one cent, I just pop on the memory and I've got my seam allowance without having to faff about all the time that I was doing before, getting a little ruler out and getting a bit of washi tape to stick on the, on the, on the plate. I sometimes I use those seam magnets, but they never stayed still for me. And they were all, they always move. I don't need to do any of that. That is a complete game changer. Now, if I want to do some like gathering stitches, you know, and you want to work like inside the seam, I just, I've got a little list of all the stitch widths. So if I want to do a quarter of an inch stitch width, mine is 5.5 of the stitch width. And then if I want to do say, uh, three sixteenths a little bit further in on that it's all within the one centimeter seam allowance and then I pop my machine on to stitch with seven and what a game changer seriously just press a button and it move and you just keep your foot on the edge of the fabric all the time so you don't have to guess There's no guessing oh that's an absolute game changer why I've never known that all these years beforehand I have no idea um, and a few of you said when I mentioned it on the previous vlog that you didn't know either so I'm glad I've shown I've so I'm glad I've shared something with you there. Uh, it's probably in my manual, which I never read the manual. Who reads the manuals? You only ever get the manuals out, don't you, when you've got a problem. Um, so that is a total game changer. So still learning all the time, but loving it, soaking it all in. I'd love to know what you think of my Primrose dress and my final version. I think I've got it tweaked just right. I feel really comfortable in it. There's still plenty of room to move about. It's not too tight. It's fitted, but it's not too tightly fitted. Still got movement. I can get a long sleeve t-shirt on underneath and um, I just feel really lovely wearing them. So I'd love your feedback. Let me know what you think. Uh, so that's it for today. I just wanted to tell you what I've been up to and uh, obviously I'll keep you updated on any other pattern drafting I do. So thumbs up if you liked today's video, hope you did, hope you enjoyed it and um, don't forget to subscribe if you would like to follow along with me and if you follow me on Instagram, Loopy Mabel's Closet, you'll see daily inspiration of my outfits. I'm always mixing and matching what I've made. I love to go up my wardrobe on a morning and shop my wardrobe, create little outfits that I've never thought of creating before. It's lovely, I just stand there and think, I wonder if that would go with that. And mm, if I layer that with that, would that go on? Maybe add a little brooch to bring into that colour. Yeah, it, it's just lovely. And even though we're all in lockdown and we don't go out as much as we'd like to go out, I still like to get dressed up on a morning with, with clothes that I've made. It makes me feel better, it makes me feel good. I like to put my full makeup on, do my hair. Even when I just go for a daily newspaper, my morning walk for John on the morning to get his newspaper. It's just so lovely to get dressed up and you feel better. Well, I do. So I'm wearing all my clothes, everything I'm making, they're all getting worn, which is what I wanted to do. I didn't want to be making things then I'm not going to wear because what's the point in that? And uh, so, yeah, I'm feeling quite good about my dressmaking because I haven't made anything, I don't think there's anything I've made that I don't wear. So that's good. So I hope I've inspired you to maybe 
start sewing again if you're watching and there's something maybe you'd like to start again or maybe just to start or I hope I've inspired you to maybe have a go at pattern drafting. Anyway, that's me. That's my ramblings for today. Thank you so much for joining me and hopefully I'll see you on my next sewing vlog. Until then, as I always say, please take care and happy sewing.